Hi guys, Hengist here from Military Wargaming. Welcome back, Beansters, old and new subscribers. Today, yes, it's French Somaliland 1940. It's France versus Italy. And we are Wargaming East Africa. Here is our theatre of operations, the Cop Francaise de Somali, and the environs around it. And here is our operational map in which we'll be looking at uh, the assassination today of General Germain, uh, the police clampdown in Djibouti there, martial law, a bombing run against uh, Italian, uh, French ground forces, and a series of raids. Now, if you've been following our work, um, you'll basically know that there have been two major actions at Galileo, which has resulted in the, uh, the French basically tactically redeploying. And um, we augment all our work with a newspaper and obviously comics to, so people can keep up the vein. And talking of comics, uh, I wanted to talk about Hugo Pratt, a great comic Easter, who actually wrote um, The Scorpions of the Desert, which was around the uh, Long Range Desert Group. But importantly, other sources can provide information. Notably, his, his keen attention to detail, he provided some great source material on uniforms. And so if you like the LRDG, uh, try these comics. The new War Room, well, that is up and running too. It's an eight by five for uh, this campaign. And uh, one last point really, operational security. We can't reveal everything that's going on with movement arrows because both sides are watching. Now, we're gonna look also briefly at Italian medical services and player research. Uh, Christian Lindvald, who uh, actually served in Afghanistan in the medical corps, uh, effectively is going to be looking into uh, the Italian um, medical services and also constructing a field hospital. Again, like everything we do, this will be planned, but the details that we get will really help augment uh, some of the ideas we're developing within uh, the military wargaming group on how we can factor this in, including logistics and so much more. It also helps augment our rules and, and improves them and tailors them. So without further ado, let's get into Dust Till Dawn, uh, turn three and four, uh, the cloak and dagger aspects first and humid, which we're exploring and developing and having great fun with. So this mission was planned. It's a covert operation. It includes the uh, Vichy representatives who will be landing uh, in Djibouti. And um, ultimately on board this is General Germain and a deputy of uh, the Vichy government uh, and representatives. And as they touch down here uh, and begin to sort of refuel and uh, uh, you know, exit the aircraft, so to speak, at the same point in time, we've got taking off from Ethiopia, uh, I believe, um, some Caproni bombers who are going to do a ground attack against French forces. But back in Djibouti, uh, as the aircraft are refueled and the mechanics uh, fiddle about, uh, we've got the delegation being met by um, Le Gentle Home. Now, he was a friend of General Germain, historically. And as they move out to the outskirts of Djibouti and are driving along, all of a sudden there is an ambush. Now, details are unclear. It is said that two Italians opened fire. One was killed in a shootout. Uh, the other fled into the city as the medical services arrive and you can see them there looking and doing and conducting sweeps to try and find uh, the missing man. Here's some of the details, a nine millimeter M38 found at the scene. And uh, General Le Gentleholm immediately issued martial law in Djibouti um, and ultimately the, uh, the aircraft fly off, absent the body which was to be given full military burial. But at the same time in Addis Ababa, we have an SM-79 landing as well on the airfield. And that has a number of important VIPs on it as well. They're met by the Simbas and a band and um, uh, their pilots are given a, a far better breakfast. But on board is a critical component, uh, Colonel Victor Largo of Italian uh, intelligence. Uh, and he is also has Sturmbannfuhrer Bleischicht with him. Uh, they exit uh, the aircraft and don't want any ceremony and want to get immediately uh, to see the Duke of Iosta. And so they leave and, and enter into Addis Ababa. Now Addis Ababa could be very interesting in terms of covert operations as well. 
They are also very uh, worried about this fifth columnist uh, situation. On the borderlands or Indian country, we've also got uh, the vestiges of sort of unrest. We have Adal of the Danakil and his brother Odal, and um, they have started uh, a, a sort of war season and are now running slightly amok in these borderlands, looking for targets of opportunity. Um, Adal is quite a ferocious warrior uh, and, and he is a concern to all. Early morning, however, in Djibouti, um, at the same point in time following the assassination, um, the police and gendarmerie have been issued an order to hunt down this sort of uh, missing suspect and also clear the area of any pot uh, potential um, agents. And Operation Iron Fist is, is executed. Um, and what you can see here is some shots of the set with uh, quite a little bit of detail. Here's the administration building and the souk, uh, the market and the police uh, station there. Uh, we've also got the poorer quarters and the mission uh, and the mermaid bar, rather infamous, dust till dawn and all of that. I couldn't resist that with Salome, the belly dancer. But um, with these missionaries as well, uh, they have information. Uh, the mosque and the Hotel Napoleon, uh, the cavalry club and Rene's bar. Uh, we've got the, uh, the garage and warehouse there as well. Uh, all of this set is basically designed around the market square and um, we've got, you know, we put a lot of work into this to try and build the, the atmosphere. Uh, the Hotel Napoleon in Djibouti will have information as well. And here's District 9, the police station, uh, you know, adjacent to the market. So um, w if we start looking a little bit closer at what's going on, um, Iron Fist begins with a sweep. Uh, effectively, which is being planned. And, it, and, and the French police are going door to door, searching just about every building, trying to drive everything out. There is a curfew, but there are a few people on the street. And um, they begin effectively by um, visiting the, the local haunts. And they manage to run into Tintin and get some really good intel. He will be classified as an A1 source. And he, he makes uh, reference to that he believes there's a spy network operating around the hospital area. Now, this was a big lead for the police, and you'll see this as it develops, but they are basically arresting, or as the officer in command said, detaining. They've set barricades, uh, they've got dogs. Uh, unfortunately, the carpet sailor is causing mayhem, and, and he always does, delaying uh, the French senior officer some considerable time. But one man makes a break, and uh, immediately the uh, French open fire from a machine gun into the market square which basically kills three people including the man that was running now uh, you know there, there was eyes rolled at this one and the, the square becomes agitated to say the least whilst there's sort of overzealous police work uh, taking place with anyone who's who's not doing it uh, as they're instructed, including their headquarters commander who basically knocked out the carpet salesman. Now this is a critical part because obviously the ambulance is stopped, uh, the bodies are found to have weapons and considered to have been insurgents uh, or Italian agents, but uh, the French commander then makes a magnificent speech or six and uh, calms everything down, but the ambulance suddenly becomes a focus because of the intelligence they've gained and so they stop the vehicle and um, start conducting uh, document searches and all sorts of things they are considered to have been heavy-handed but isn't that justified there was a huge argument about the code napoleon including whether or not the uh, hashish seller should be arrested but that's another story but anyway the uh, they, they they managed to sort of start uh, arresting a large number of people and placing them into uh, police custody for questioning. Uh, the methods of interrogation were really interesting during the game. Uh, some might say, again, very heavy handed and bat and strong. Uh, and uh, lots of uh, the characters were claiming they were completely innocent. But uh, more arrests are made, uh, more people are charged, and a lot of um, police evidence starts to build up and it's very, very interesting how the whole of this sort of game worked out. It, it became rather interesting. The blue markers denoting what buildings have been thoroughly searched, and here's the, uh, the suspects that have all been taken. 
a, a, an absolutely magnificently interesting game. You just don't have enough time to narrate everything. But here are our suspects, which the uh, French are now investigating. And here was the operational plan and the outcome. Uh, three killed, uh, unfortunately, but uh, a number of suspects taken. Okay, now uh, once martial law is in place, at the same point we've got a bombing run, as uh, we've indicated, against a French column that's falling back. Uh, again, this air mission was planned and executed, and um, the French column uh, had uh, was really, really caught in the open. And as these two Capronis came in on the first flight, uh, followed by a number of other flights, uh, it really did start to cause some concern because they didn't have anti-aircraft or and you know anti-aircraft weapons deployed and so as the bombs fell uh, there was very little that the French could do they tried to scatter and react uh, but about 20 were killed and a number of uh, supply points were also destroyed as well however um, ultimately they did manage to get uh, one heavy machine gun active from the headquarters element and they were running around trying to get their casualties and this opened fire and uh, it basically was very fortunate because it managed to clip um, one of the Capronis. Now, these were not the strongest sort of bombers. And uh, as a result of that, um, she basically got knocked off course, as you can see here, and is flying north. And so is likely uh, to crash in and around the borderlands, which uh, is going to be a bit tricky. Meanwhile, we've got the raids which are going on. Um, a, you know, Adal is really trying to impress the tribal leaders. He wants to become, you know, a man of action, a great warlord, and uh, he's taking the initiative. So we have a very quiet village which is completely unaware, and he's split his forces. So Adal is leading a battle group, and he is leading a battle group. And they have seen this very soft target. Uh, they immediately knock out the sentry, unfortunately scattering a lot of the goats. Um, and um, then proceed to basically attack. Now, they, they open fire from the hill down into the village, completely indiscriminately, uh, killing women and children, livestock and anything, and then begin to attack. They've also got another group coming in from the other flank, uh, and that also attacks, and they set fire to the Zariba fencing, which goes up uh, really quickly. One lone spearman does the best he can and takes down some men, but is shot to pieces. And um, ultimately they overrun the Zariba. Unfortunately, the fire really does catch. And before we know it, literally, uh, we've got a ring of fire around that building with screaming women and children as his warriors go mad. The warriors of the village are unable to really do much. And um, ultimately they try to flee to the south of the, of the village um, only to be, you know, sort of trapped by the rest of Odal's men. Now, Odal makes a lot of personal kills. Uh, a lot of women are taken into bondage. Um, a lot of livestock is taken as well. And of course, uh, they are enslaved, much to the wailing. Even the sorcerer or witch doctor curses them with short and painful lives. And one of the war leaders is, is Bula, is known as the, the man-eater. Now, on the borderlands, we've also got a, a patrol which is sitting in the middle of nowhere trying to get information when it is being surrounded as well. And that is gonna be rather nasty. But if we get to where we're at, you can see the hot spot of uh, where this sort of rebellion's broken out. We've got a lot coming up with Indiana Jones, uh, Michael DeCanio, who's arrived as well. And um, we're really looking forward to, to all of that action coming soon. We also have to point out the native tribes uh, are starting to get quite rest restless and we've got likely battles next turn. So in Postscript, I've enjoyed reading this book and I have to thank both Red Force um, and of course Blue Force and Green Force who are running all the asymmetric. A big thanks again to the Military Wargaming Steering Group and of course a big hello to my new dog, uh, the Ball Bell Buddy. So do subscribe, best wishes, over and out, bye for now.